Well, you made it, dear. Although, to be honest, I didn't think you'd make it this far. Congratulations. Thanks. I suppose we should hop right to it and make a ballet protagonist out of you. Firstly, we need a concept, or a theme, to start your journey. For most of our trainees, I already have a good idea of which concept would fit them best, but for you... We're going to need to figure out how to package... This. There are a few different concepts you can choose from. Let me explain each one, and we will decide which fits you best. Firstly, the princess protagonist. Some notable princess protagonist examples include Raimonda, Cinderella, Paquita, and Aurora. This concept revolves around the protagonist's sweetness, innocence, and beauty, which follows through her coming of age and subsequent marriage into queenhood. There are many ways to enhance your story as a princess protagonist, including, but not limited to, a coming of age celebration, a betrothal to a handsome prince, and some kind of conflict, whether it be a difference in social rank, a curse from childhood, or even an attempted abduction. But in any case, a prince comes, saves the day, and we have a wedding scene, which makes excellent publicity. This concept might be a good fit for you, since it requires very little personality. The rest will be taken care of by your supporting characters, such as your royal parents, magical acquaintances, and other such characters, including, of course, your handsome prince. But, but I, I'm not, I'm not royalty. Neither was Cinderella, and she got on just fine. We'll just send you out to the ball to be selected as the future bride for a charming prince. You couldn't hold your own at a ball, could you? No. I thought not. Well, another concept is the popular village girl, which include, but are not limited to, Swanhilda, Teresina, Kitri, and Lise. This concept revolves around the protagonist's charisma, personality, and adventurous spirit, which leads her into fun, mischief, and eventually, true love. Some fantastic options to add to your story as a village girl protagonist include falling in love with a poor man whilst being arranged to marry someone richer, and or some other kind of conflict, which leads to chaos and mischief. Fake death can add some interest, breaking and entering, always a good option, but I digress. In any case, love wins the day and we have a wedding scene, again for publicity. The village girl protagonist requires great charisma and beauty, as well as a slightly rebellious nature and a considerable skill in flirting. Which is why I've already eliminated this option for you. Are you certain you aren't a royal kidnapped at birth? Yeah, I think I'm pretty sure. <sighs> Well, seeing as the chances of you succeeding in either of these two options is a tad unlikely, I believe our best option would be option three, the tragic heroine. Now this option allows for the most variety, so I imagine it might be the most accommodating to your current existence. Some subtypes of the tragic heroine include the cursed maiden, an ethereal being who falls in love with the mortal, and a young woman who falls into heartbreak. Do any of these options resonate with you particularly? Um, I, I'm, I'm flexible. Well, well, Nick's ethereal being, since clearly you're far from ethereal, what do you do for fun? Video games are cool. How does playing with golden apples in an enchanted garden at 3 a.m. sound to you? Um, it's not for everybody. Now, hypothetically, if you were cursed to become an animal, purely hypothetically, would you A, spend your time in a woodland glade lamenting over your tragic fate, or B, wander off and become a menace to society? I was afraid of that. You can't let that happen again. How do you wish to die? What 
If you should choose to become a tragic heroine, the way you die could make or break your entire career. So let me highlight some of your best death options. Option one, you could die a traumatic death in the arms of your beloved. Option two, you could die together with your partner for the greater good and or be reunited in the afterlife. Option three is to die a tragic death and your beloved can meet you again in your supernatural form along with 50 other identical supernatural beings. Of course, I always advise this option because it opens up wonderful opportunities for a white act and that's always good for the agency. Most protagonists opt for a combination of these. For instance, Giselle chose option one, a traumatic death in the arms of her beloved, but then combine it with the white act in option three, producing a very profound effect. Food for thought. Juliet selects option two for herself and Romeo, and their death brings about the eventual reconciliation of their families. The sacrificial nature of their death increases the tragedy, of course. I know you're thinking about Odette and what option she might have selected. Well, in short, Odette is an anomaly, having been one of the only protagonists to make her entire life a white act. Now, Odette did choose death option two, which involved her and Siegfried's deaths freeing the cursed swan maidens, while she and Siegfried reunite in paradise. Although she does like to change things around a bit, sometimes even opting out of death entirely. But since she's our best talent, no one questions it, and then her fan base like to have very animated discussions on which version they like best very good PR. But don't worry, it's far too early for you to pull a stunt like that just yet. Now Nakia is an exemplary tragic heroine, having selected the full death package of all three death options in one. A traumatic death in the arms of her beloved following a lethal snake bite, then a white act, famously known to her fanbase as the Kingdom of the Shades. Then at last, her beloved dies also and follows her to be reunited in the afterlife. Of course, I was aware of the risks when I first advised her to take this option, but it seemed to have served her well in her career, and now she's one of the most notable protagonists in the whole world. Now, how do you wish to die? Peacefully? S surrounded by loved ones? With such an unassuming death preference, I strongly feel that it would be better, comparatively, to not die at all. For the sake of the interest of your story, how does that sound? That, that, that sounds great. I think that would be a really good first step. We'll work on not dying first, and then we'll work the rest out later, all right? Good. Well, we made good progress today, although you have much to learn. Not dying as a protagonist it requires extensive knowledge, training, and skill. For your next training session, be sure to bring a notebook. <laughs> Let me log in first, y'all. <laughs> That one ended climatic. All right, one more time. <laughs> okay. Fake deaths are optional. Breaking and entrying. Entrying. <laughs> Option one. You could die a traumatic death in the arms of your... Unk. Um. Video games are cool. <laughs> I don't even play video games. <laughs> video games. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Why is this so hard? We got through your lines with such ease. <laughs> this is such a hard line. I don't even play video games. I don't know why this is in the script. If y'all have any good video game wrecks, just hit me up. Maybe I should get into video games. So I can, you know, emit more protagonist energy. So comment below. Are there any video games that you think I should try?